Ever since the first astronauts left Earth, they have been profoundly moved by the awesome view of our planet from space. The experience of seeing Earth as one entity, beautiful and fragile, is known as the overview effect. And there's a growing movement to extend this life-changing perspective to anyone who seeks it. I'm really excited to be joined today by Frank White, a space philosopher and author of The Overview Effect, Space Exploration and Human Evolution, and Rachel Lyons, who is the Executive Director of Space for Humanity. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for having us. My pleasure. And, you know, Frank, I wanted to start with you. Um, you coined this idea of the, of the overview effect and have written about it and, you know, extensively in your book, interviewed astronauts about it. Um, what first inspired you to coin that phrase? And could you just give us an overview of the overview effect? What is it? The overview effect, one of the aspects of it is it's an experience. Mm. And that's important because that's how I came to coin the phrase. I was very interested in Gerard K. O'Neill's ideas about the best way for humanity to expand outward off of planet Earth. I was thinking about it pretty much all the time and I was flying cross country to do a consulting engagement, had nothing to do with space exploration. I was looking out the window throughout the flight and it just hit me all of a sudden that if I lived in outer space all the time, I would have an overview of the planet Earth, that I would see it as a whole system interconnected everything on it interrelated, and that I would have a different philosophical starting point from the people who live on the surface. And then the term overview effect followed. I, I guess we would call it an insight or an epiphany uh, that kind of capped off all this thinking, but it was an experience. We were founded with the premise that space is a tool for transformation. And so what we were founded to do is with the rise of commercial space flight, with these companies that are now making this experience accessible. So companies like Virgin Galactic, Blue Origin, The Space Perspective, and SpaceX. Mm -hmm. um, companies that you can soon, soon or even now buy tickets with to go to space and have this experience. We're going to be sponsoring people from all over the world, people that are leaders in their communities, people who have a sphere of influence, and people who also wouldn't otherwise be able to afford the experience to go and go to space, have that overview effect experience, look back at our Earth, and then come back down and share that perspective far and wide. And I wonder if you could both speak to why it is so important to expand uh, this kind of feeling and experience, be democratize it, if you will, beyond people who are trained to be astronauts and have that very specific background. And then also, um, you know, the wealthy who can afford these kinds of space tickets. One of the one of the most prominent things astronauts talk about is, hey, I knew there were no borders or boundaries between countries before I went, but now I really know that. I know the earth is a whole system. And I know that what happens on one part of the planet affects everything else on the planet because it is a whole system. And with that consciousness, that awareness, we are of the opinion that people will begin to behave differently, think differently, change what they do in life, and uh, begin to work together more collaboratively. And it is, it is a hypothesis, we need to prove it, and that's part of what we're doing here with Space for Humanity and other organizations. One other thing I would add, if you talk to astronauts, they all feel an incredible need and obligation to share what they've seen. Mm. For the, it's for the same reason as what I'm saying. They feel like it would make the world a better place. It, it's the truth of where we are and the fact that we're on this little spaceship, if you will, and we're moving through a universe that's vast and, uh, you know, not necessarily friendly to human life. And mm -hmm. this is the best planet. Um, Jeff Bezos said that, and a lot of people have said it. This is the best planet that we've found. So we have to take care of it better than we have. Many astronauts from back in Apollo days said, 
We need poets to go. We need songwriters we go to, to go. We need philosophers to go because it's an overwhelming experience and we're trained in a certain way and it's not, it's not really to report this kind of experience. They should have said the poet. I got the pleasure of interviewing Sarisha Benla last week. She was Virgin Galactic Astronaut 004. So she just flew with Richard Branson. And two things really stuck with me that she said is one is that, you know, she flew like, it was like a month and a half before that interview. She flew and she said, I'm still processing the experience. And then the second thing she said that really stuck with me is that she was like, all I know is that this is a clear call to action. And mm -hmm. and just as Frank said, it's like, yeah, astronauts come back down and they a lot of times start nonprofit initiatives or clean, wash, clean water initiatives or things that um, are around solving some of our greatest challenges. And many of them come back and do that. Um, even the ones who don't know exactly what happened to them up there come down and have changed behaviors very often. Yeah, that's so wonderful. And, you know, I'm reminded of the famous line in contact that they should have sent a poet, right? This whole this whole idea of uh, having a diversity of perspectives have this incredibly unique experience. So, um, you know, you, Space for Humanity does have this uh, citizen astronaut program and with the goal of sending you know, thousands of people to space. Could you talk a little bit about what you're looking for? Is it is it really just trying to get that broad base of, of different perspectives? Yeah, yeah, um, that, absolutely that. I mean, what we plan on doing is um, sponsoring a full mission. So depending on the, pl the flight provider, that could be six to eight people. And I envision that being just the most inclusive crew that's that that our, our um, planet has to offer. So, you know, like maybe someone who's, like I said, working to address climate change, someone who's working to address poverty, someone from North America, someone from Europe, you know, someone from Africa, all, I want representation from all over, all different socioeconomic economic backgrounds, all different um, educational backgrounds, all different passions, all different, just like, you know, religious backgrounds, different, simply different people in the world. Mm -hmm. And by doing that, I think we get to have countries represented in spaceflight and communities represented in spaceflight that have never been represented before. And so it's like, can you can you imagine when these people come back and share that with their communities and have their communities um, now have this connection to this experience? Our motto is to space for Earth and it's mm -hmm. opening up access to space for everyone. So what did I see when uh, Branson and Bezo Bezos flew? I saw the beginning of opening up the overview effect to everyone. That's what I saw, because I'd been thinking about it. I'd been talking about it. I'd been working on it. Other people who'd never heard of the overview effect or uh, weren't very interested in space exploration saw a billionaire space race. Mm -hmm. So so much of what we're seeing right now depends on our, our existing perspective. I'm wondering if you think that for people who just don't really have an interest in leaving Earth, maybe they just are risk averse or something like that, can the overview effect be something that you can experience from Earth? It's an increased sense of connection to, to humans and to Earth as a whole. It's that feeling of awe and wonder, and then it's the part, the, the feeling of being part of something so much greater. Mm. And that's something that, like, that's not unique to the overview effect. It's 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 about this experience of awe, and that's that is the main emotional component of the overview effect. Is this experience of awe, and and that and so that the way that it makes you feel like you're part of something so much greater. That's what leads to many of these um, shifts in behavior as well, and so that can be experienced in a lot of ways. Um, a lot of researchers who are interested in the overview effect have also studied the way, like the ways that you can get it via meditation, via um, plant medicines, via like you know looking and and seeing a beautiful vista at the top of a mountain, um, or going to different cultures and and seeing how other cultures live. There's all of these different ways that we can expand our perspective, and the overview effect is a. Um, incredibly powerful way that we have access to right now. It's mm -hmm. like this first moment in human history that this is something that is going to be accessible for more and more people. It has incredible potential for 
um, mass amounts of change in, in the way we view the world on a collective scale. And I think it's something that we need to take advantage of. And there's so many other ways that we can bring it to people right now as well. Spiritual teachers have been trying to tell us, this is what systems theorists have been trying to tell us. We're all one, we're all connected. Uh, that feeling of being part of something greater than yourself, that's a universal human feeling. And so we, again, we're operating on a belief that that is a kind of change in consciousness that our, our planet needs right now, our species needs in order to, uh, you know, be good astronauts on Spaceship Earth. We're using the space environment as a tool for transformation. And that is the first insight I had when I started interviewing astronauts is that when we ask, what is spaceflight about? What is the purpose of it? Uh, there are many answers to that question, but one is that it changes consciousness. It changes self-awareness. It's a shift in identity of the experiencer. And we need that for our evolution as a society. So it's totally, let me emphasize this again, it is totally connected with the earth and the future of the earth. There is no leaving the earth behind. And that's the last point I would make. I ask almost every astronaut, what did you get out of the spaceflight experience? I have not heard one person, and I don't think I will, say, oh, what I got out of it is we need to abandon this planet. It's hopeless. <laughs> uh, we need to leave the earth behind. Absolutely. Uh, that's one of the other things that I, I enjoy about your book, Frank, is that you take um, both this current uh, uh, perspective, but also you, you really do look really far into the future. Like what we should be asking ourselves all as the public, in addition to people in the in the space sphere, um, that what, what do we want out of space in the future and what will we bring to space in the future? And one of the terms that I love in your book is homo spatians, this idea of a future version of, of humans that is adapted to space environments. So could you talk a little bit about that whole idea and, and how and, and why you think it's, it is important for us to start really thinking about what our future in space is going to be like? One of the other aspects of what's going on right now that's important for people to understand is Things are moving very, very quickly toward what I call large-scale migration of humanity into the solar ecosystem. It's not just space tourism. It, you know, it's not just a few people having the overview effect. It's the beginning, uh, the possibility of people living and working uh, off the planet. And there are many people who are both interested in space and who are not, who are concerned about that because if we simply take our current tribal behavior uh, and ex expand it out into the solar ecosystem, the dream that many of us have of a better humanity, a better society, a better approach to the cosmos will not be realized. And uh, so we're working hard. Uh, I've created a nonprofit called the Human Space Program to, to work explicitly on this. And we're nowhere near at this point of having a big global conversation about that. Um, but we need to, otherwise we might look back, you know, our, our descendants might look back 500 years from now and say, why didn't Frank think of that? Why didn't Becky think of that? Why didn't Rachel think of that? That was a bad idea, whatever it might be. Mm -hmm. uh, but we're looking back at 500 years of exploration and we're, we're regretting a lot of what happened in 500 years ago. And I don't want that to happen again. Right now we're in like a pivotal time, obviously. It's always a pivotal time, but this is this is a real exclamation point time right now. So I think that people might be even more um, open and interested in things like the overview effect because we're dealing with the downsides of being an interconnected society so much. and. Um, People are really, I think, hungry for solutions that are going to require the opposite end of, of global cooperation on things like pandemics and climate change and all of that. So I'd love to just hear both what, uh, what you both think about um, how this moment in time could really help people to, um, to have some of these revelations about how we're on this planet. With many advancements in technology, the, the technology gets developed and kind of takes on a life of its own. And then we're like, oh, crap 
you know, we're, our society is addicted to these things and, you know, like it's, it, we're not using these things in healthy ways at all. And so I think we're, we're at this moment in spaceflight and in space exploration that we can really intentionally develop our future here. Mm-hmm. Because whether or not we decide to come together and do that, it's these developments are happening. Like this is really, really happening. So I think that, um, yeah, what we're working on with Space for Humanity, what Frank's working on with Human Space Program, with the overview effect, it is it it is an opportunity right now for us to come together and do it. Many people don't know this, and it's often a revelation, but President Kennedy did not want Apollo to be a space race. He did not want a competition with the Soviet Union. He began to reach out to Nikita Khrushchev early in his presidency and said, why don't we go together to the moon? Mm -hmm. And ultimately, not long before his death, he proposed before the United Nations a multinational mission to the moon. That was a long time ago, but I think President Kennedy saw what that might mean for humanity. And if he could have, he would have changed the narrative. But when he was assassinated, we went back to the space race. Why do I bring that up? We missed a great opportunity for a quote unquote human space program in 1960 something. I feel like we're at that point again, where we have a choice. Uh, We have a choice about how we do this. And I do believe the next five to 10 years are gonna be absolutely critical. And I would like everybody who's watching this to shift your awareness and realize you're on a spaceship. You're on Spaceship Earth. You're an astronaut. You're already in space. The Earth is in space. We are in space. What we're talking about is it's becoming a multi-planet species. Mm -hmm. Uh, And I just want everybody to realize you have an obligation and a responsibility and an opportunity to have an impact on that. 